God, we thank you and we praise you for the latter rain being released. We thank you for setting us up for this day called today that you, oh God, get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. We, your servants, come decreasing. I, your servant, Paulette Denise, decrease that you, oh God, would increase, speak to me, speak through me, set the atmosphere, God. Thank you for giving us the, the idea to even come forward and, and teach this topic of getting in alignment with you, of recognizing and acknowledging your times and seeing that some things have shifted and some things are different. And so we come and we give you access, Holy Spirit, to teach us, lead us, guide us, instruct us as we come getting in alignment for blessings to be released. We thank you, God, for this time of intensive teaching and of us grasping a better understanding of the timing and the alignment with you. God, every scripture that we go over, every word that we cover on this day called today, allow our spirits to be quickened, allow us to hear and receive that which you want us to hear and receive. God, you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise as your servants are pressing into your presence, God. We just thank Thank you for what you have in store for us. We say, have your way, oh God. Have your way on this day called today, God, as we magnify you and exalt you. And we say, you can speak to us. We thank you for getting us in alignment with you, oh God. We thank you that you would not have us ignorant concerning the things of you, oh God, that you would show us, that you would teach us. Thank you, spirit of truth, for speaking like never before to our hearts as we thank you, as we praise you, as we give you all all of the glory. God, get it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless God. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Even as the, the song in dance, the ministry that was played at the top, that was from one of the regional meetings with Cassandra Scott Ministries. I believe we were in Mississippi um, at uh, Prophetess Tamikla Brooks Church. And so the quality wasn't what the picture itself wasn't there, but the anointing was there. It doesn't matter what it looked like. The anointing of God was there and he's promised to pour out his latter rain in our presence upon his people. That Acts chapter two, that Holy Spirit, just fire being poured out on each and every one of us. God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Well, let me tell you about the topic for today. A, a lot of what I will be teaching is coming out of Chuck Pierce's book, A Time to Advance, a book by Chuck Pierce titled, A Time to Advance. If you have it or if you wanna order it, a lot of it will be coming out of this. I have been studying this book since 2015 before, look, before I met Don Turner, before it became double portion. At the time, it was just a portion ministries, Paulette Denise. Um, and then I ended up getting married in the midst of studying this for myself. And let me put a piece of history on here. Thank you, Dr. Cassandra Scott. And I know um, Minister Ursula texts that she won't be able to join, but she'll watch it on the YouTube. So definitely Ursula Doty. I believe Juanita as well. You guys are of the tribe of Judah. Um, with Cassandra Scott Ministries. And here's a piece of history to add on before we go forward in the lesson about understanding where did this come from? Am I grabbing something out of the sky? No, I've been studying this for about this many years, a little over six years that I've been studying this out and I've done a lot more study and I didn't just take it just because he was put it in a book doesn't mean I took his word for it. I went and looked up every scripture on my own. I'm going to share with you and Keisha, that's why I said get online because I'm going to share. I don't have a cute PowerPoint today. We're going to look at my word document and see my notes of what I pulled together because this is not a polished finished message. This is a message that as long as we're alive in the land of the living, it will continue to grow and increase. And so here's the historical piece that on Cassandra Scott Ministries, which started in May 2010, 
I joined with her the second day, May 2010. I was with her that entire time as an administrator behind the scenes, helping with the rotations. Each shift, we would pray for 40 days. And instead of stopping, we do another shift of 40 days and another shift of 40 days. And somewhere around the 11th shift, the exact date was the end of September 2011. Dr. Flakes, when she gave me her focus, she said, that's from the tribe of Judah. And so I put on their tribe of Judah. People were like, who is tribe of Judah? I said, that's Dr. Flakes. That's who she says she is. So then that's when the original seven directors began to pick what tribe they were going to be a part of um, the, as the 12 sons of, of Jacob or Israel. Um, it's how the history on that. And that definitely the ministry that I walk in is an offshoot. I was, as a matter of fact, the book, that picture on the front of that book was taken in Dr. Cassandra Scott's kitchen at a Mary Kay makeover that was on my birthday. So that's my history. We can't get away from history. Don and I met as a result of Cassandra Scott Ministries. So I thank God for what he's done and what he is doing with Cassandra Scott Ministries. As I said, the tribes began in 2011. I was installed as a tribe director at the summit in 2012. Um, and then last year in 2020, I transitioned, I passed the reins over to Elder Geraldine Gaines for the tribe of Dan. And so I'm, I'm a consulting person for CSM, but because of the transitions with life changes, you know, from 2010 to 2020, that's 10 years that I poured in and I was there, but that's just my history. I had to put this on here and let you know where this is coming from and some of let you give you the capacity to recognize or see where some of the anointing that you're tapping into is coming from. Know this, I've been a teacher since, gosh, since 1998, I've been teaching the things of God, which is funny because I'm not even going, going to go into that. But when I started teaching a class here in Houston in 2005, God gave me this, this saying. And the saying is, the more you know, the more you don't know. And the more you don't know, the more you need to know. You'll be forever learning. Hence my bookcase behind us. <laughs> you'll be forever learning. The more you know, the more you don't know. And the more you don't know, the more you need to know. You'll be forever learning while you're on this side of glory. And so I thank God that as we go forward, as I said, this is not a period it's done. This is to get you on this journey to understand a time to advance, but not just a time to advance. The, the, the title that God had given me was that it is a time to understand being aligned for the blessings, that it is a time for us to understand the timing and the alignment with God. And so the first scripture that we want to look at is Hosea chapter four, verse six. Everything that I, I'll, I'll specify what scripture it is, but this is the amplified. Hosea four, six, it says, my people are destroyed. And let me give a history. What was going on in Hosea, it was a whole nother message. I have so many words turning inside of me that I don't want to go into. But here at chapter four, the leaders, the elders were being rebuked by the spirit of the Lord through the prophet Hosea. And what God was saying is, um, because you y'all didn't do what you were supposed to do, now we're at this point, verse six. So on your own, you can read it all in context. But at Hosea 4, verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you, the priestly nation, the leaders, you've rejected knowledge. Uh-oh. I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me. Seeing you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That sounds very mean, harsh, and rude, but this is God, the Lord God, sovereign ruler that wants us to be aligned for blessing, and he is giving us this word. What has happened? Now, they rejected the knowledge of God, not just book knowledge. It was not book knowledge that they rejected because they were relying on their book knowledge and they were relying on the traditions of men over the knowledge of God. If you go read it in context, that was what the knowledge was lacking that they had not passed on to the next generation, to their children and their children's children, who God was. Now, some of us may be the called out in our family and your assignment is to leave a, to start a legacy, leave a legacy, tear down. We talked about generational blessings in the past and what happens was, if you are doing opposite, you end up walking in the generational curses. Ah, Jesus, help us. One of the ways that that happens is the elders, the priestly nation, the leaders, 
They pass on traditions of men. They pass on church doctrine and dogma and stuff like that, but pass on who the triune God is, the community of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Ursula and Dodie. You should receive your thesis in the mail. It should be there today. I mailed it. Um, so really just breaking down who God is. Our next scripture that we are going to look at is Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 through 32. For those that are looking on the screen, I study everything parallel because I like amplified. And so this side is the amplified. And then this side is the Lexingham English Bible. If you're wondering what is what, what is going on here? So this it's because it's parallel. Amplified Lexingham English. And you know what? Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, know this, there will be some things that we talk about after the call that will not be on the recording. And so if you have some things that you, we will do Q&A at the end, um, but there's also some other things that I'll go over because I did have some people that say they can't get on. And I said, the portion that's recorded, I will send to you. There will be some stuff that's not recorded. So, okay, Daniel chapter seven, let's just jump right in. This is a courtrooms of heaven scripture where we can see the courtrooms of heaven right here in front of us as you read through the scripture. But at verse 25, it says, I'm going to read it on the amplified side. Um, it says, and he spoke words against the most high God. Now this is the adversary, the enemy. If you go back up in Daniel seven, it was talking about the adversary and the enemy. And what did he do? He spoke words against the most high God and he shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change the time of sacred feasts and holy days and the law. So who is behind this change of time, this change of sacred feasts, this change of holy days and this change of the law? It is always the spirit behind it is the spirit of the enemy that's talking crazy about God and trying to wear out the saints, get us busy, chasing our tails, fighting over doctrines instead of really recognizing what's going on. But God, you get the glory. Keep reading. It says, and the saints shall be given into his hand for one time, two times and a half time, th three and one half years. That's a lot right there. I'm going to skip over that for the sake of this recording. Keep going. Verse 26. But the judgment shall be set by the court of the most high. Mm, courtrooms of heaven. And they shall take away his dominion to consume it gradually and to destroy it suddenly in the end. So this taking away the dominion of the adversary, those are the believers that come forth and we access the kingdom now and we operate in dominion over the enemy now. He is being consumed gradually and driven out of our lives, our spheres, our family, those who we intercede for. And in the end, he'll be destroyed suddenly. But he, right now, we have to walk in a realm of dominion. Verse 27, it says, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all the dominions shall serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my waking thoughts troubled me. So Daniel was saying, when I had this vision, it, it freaked me out. My waking thoughts troubled me much and my cheerfulness of countenance was changed in me, but I kept the matter of the interpreting angels information in my heart and my mind. And so, just know this, what I wanted us to see was who is behind the changing of the times. Why do we have to get in alignment with the times? Because the adversary is changing times. And we can see from verse 28 that this was actually a vision that Daniel was having that was being interpreted by an angel. Let's look at the next scripture, Daniel chapter 11. This was one of our focuses at one of the um, for one of the summits. I don't remember which number it was with CSM, but we the focus was great exploits. And so let's put it in context. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 through 34. Again, it was tell you go back and put it all the way in context. We're going to jump in at verse 32. It says, and such as. Oh, Jesus, I don't have it. in. Let me just read on your own. Read it back in in context. But I want to read this on the Lexingham side and we'll come back over here for one word that I want out of the, the Amplified. It says, and those who violate the covenant 
He will seduce with flattery. Who is he? The enemy, the adversary. If you violate the covenant, if you're out of alignment with God, which another word, covenant, you have to be in alignment for covenant. Uh huh. So if you violate the covenant, he's going to seduce with flattery. But the persons who know their God will stand firm and will take action. The Amplified says, but the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and stand firm and do exploits for God. This is why we must get renew our mind to the word of God and get in alignment with God because history and life has given us a narrative that is not the narrative that we are to walk in as people and children of God, as kingdom citizens for such a time as this in the kingdom. Verse 33 on the Lexingham side, it says, and those who have insight will instruct the many, but they will fall by sword and by flame, by captivity and by plunder, for some time and when they fall they will receive little help and many will join with them in hypocrisy now doesn't this sound like what's been happening i, I don't i'm not a politician i'm a praetician but with politics and a lot of prophetic people speak many shall fall and they're not even gonna get no help it's gonna seem like they're hypocrites Keep reading. And even some of those who have insight will fall in order for them to be refined by it. Why are they falling? It's part of the refiner's fire. <laughs> and to be purified and cleansed until the time of the end for the appointed time is still to come. And so there's something about the appointed time of God. And we need to understand his way of thinking because his thoughts are not like our thoughts, which we see right here in Isaiah 55, verse six through nine. The Passion Translation titles this, God's mercy is greater than man's. God's mercy is greater than man's. Now, our thoughts are not like his thoughts, but he's merciful toward us. So let's see verse six. I'm going to read it on the Amplified. It says, seek, inquire for, and require the Lord while he may be found, claiming him by necessity and by right. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let's just say, let the wicked, uh, let them forsake the doctrines of men and this man-made stuff contrary outside of what God is saying in the word. Let's get back to basics, back to the Bible. Okay, so um, let him forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have love, pity, and mercy to him and to our God, for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. So there is a turning that needs to come back to the Lord and know this, that even if we saw in Daniel, some may fall, some may be hypocrites, but when you run back to the Lord, he's going to show love. He's going to show pity. He's going to show mercy. He's going to show an abundance of pardon because then now look at verse eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so what we must do is get our thoughts in alignment with God. So let's pray one more time and we're getting to the meat of the notes of seeing the alignment of God's timing. God, we thank you and we praise you for this place that you have hollowed out on today. This place that you have called your servants to come together and delve into the word, that you would open up this word. God, give us ears that hear and eyes that see what it is that you're saying, releasing and doing for your servants on today. In this time and in this season, you want us in a alignment with you. You're also, you said, I will not have you ignorant concerning the enemy's devices. And so we thank you for exposing the wiles, for exposing the tactics, for exposing every plan of the enemy. God, that you would empower us to be who you've created us and placed us in the earth realm for such a time as this to be. God, with so many people transitioning to glory, with so many things happening, even COVID came in and caused premature death for so so many people, but God, we're yet here alive in the land of the living. So the fire of Holy Spirit, those cloven tongues that were released on the day of Pentecost, they are, are empowering us like never before to live life on 
purpose. And so we thank you and we praise you, God. Thank you for what you're doing as we go deeper and go further into this time of study. Show us even the more what we need to see in Jesus name. Amen. Let's keep going. I had to do that. I heard Holy Spirit say pause and pray. So we just went over these three scriptures, Daniel 7, Daniel 11 and Isaiah 55. And these were my thoughts where Holy Spirit was telling me how to talk about this. And what God was saying that the enemy is trafficking. He's trafficking with the people of God, trying to get us out of alignment because he's a masterful, he's the master of the screw tape element. You guys remember the screw tape element. It's to get the people of God to never acknowledge or recognize that they have power and dominion over him. You saw the role of dominion up there in Daniel and the enemy wants to traffic us out of our dominion and get us majoring on the minors. So we never plug into the power to whoop his butt. What do you mean by trafficking, Paulette? In Ezekiel 28, verse five, Ezekiel 28, verse five, this is of the Amplified, it says, by your, and this was where it was describing in the book of Ezekiel, it was describing the fall of Lucifer from heaven. He was speaking of a king in Ezekiel 28, but the spirit behind the king was the Luciferian spirit that was kicked out of heaven when you go read Ezekiel 28 in context. But at verse five, he says, by your great wisdom and your traffic, you have increased your riches and power and your heart is proud and lifted up because of your wealth. This is talking about the adversary. This is the spirit of screw tape. This is the spirit of the enemy. This is the spirit of, of our enemy, the enemy of God. Even as I read something earlier, I think in the screw tape element, when it said that the, the enemy is not equal to God, he's actually equal to an angel, the archangel Michael. But the point is he understood trafficking to increase riches and power. Seems like the dark world has money to do everything and the church is struggling. I said, seems like the devil is a lie. God is exposing the trafficking of the enemy and we will come out of a, the lie, come out of agreement with every lie that we've listened to that is hindering the finances from flowing in the kingdom the way they ought to flow. So God, we thank you for exposing this thing that we would get back in alignment. Remember, the enemy wants us out of alignment because he understands that if we're not in the right place at the right time, we can't get where we, we won't receive all that you have for us. We get trickles and bits and pieces, but we want a deluge. We want the latter rain. We want you to overflow, overflow in this place. And what I wrote was, it's about cycles. Getting in alignment with God and understanding the time to advance is about understanding cycles. You know, a lot of us, um, we study, we, it, who else besides me? These birthdays seem to come faster and faster. It's like, dang, I just had a birthday. Or you're looking on Facebook, I thought that person just had a birthday. Yeah, it's been a whole year. Time it seems like it's speeding up. We, we recognize the cycles of our birthday. We recognize the cycles of New Year. The, the new year on the Gregorian calendar, when we, everybody celebrate passing out of December into January, I'm going to be new this year. And you're not even in the, you're really not in the proper alignment with God. Yes, it's a good idea to be new this year on the Gregorian calendar, but let's go ahead and be new this year in the calendar of God, Jesus. So um, I said, we know and observe these, but the Bible looks at these a little different. And you know, I was trying to find in the Bible where anybody in the Bible celebrated a birthday. I'm not saying we shouldn't celebrate them. We should, that God, God is doing that. Thank you for another year of life. It's an attitude of gratitude. And even that has gotten so skewed where it's my birthday. I get special treatment. Here's my cash app. The devil is a lie. Thank you, Lord, for another year. This is what chapter 51 looks like. You know, that's good. But we got to be careful not to get into the ways of the world. Jesus, help me. I'm in a ditch. Okay, so the Bible, I, like I said, I did not find a birthday celebration for a human in the Bible. I'm not saying we don't celebrate it. Just like Christmas is not, I mean, Christ's birth is not December 25th, but we still celebrate it right there. I'm not moving us away from that. I just want us to be educated on the backstory because they've changed the narrative. You know what? Let me stop for one quick second. Here's a commercial, a commercial. Um, I don't watch reality TV or talk TV that much. I don't, I, I really don't. Certain things I will, but I, Don had the TV on um, 
we don't have cable. And so it was left on the channel when the TV came on in the morning and the view was on the show, the view. And they were talking about how history, the way history was taught in school, they just, they, they gave us the narrative they wanted us to have. And so they were talking about how even if you're in different states, you learned about this in Pennsylvania, you learned about this in California, you learned about that in Texas, but we don't have a full history understanding. And so God is saying when it comes to the word of God, especially I don't mean to step on nobody's toes, but God is kicking sacred cows on today. It's not Paulette. A lot of us learn Catholicism, Baptist, uh, whatever, the ways of the church, bishop and pastor and all of them. We learn all of those ways, but that's the narrative we were told. Have we went and studied it for ourselves? Study to show yourself approved. Join us on tomorrow. I'm going to go into that one a little bit more on tomorrow. But let me go back into my notes. God, I thank you for speaking to us. This is, a, I'm not just getting up here to say, oh, I'm a teacher. God wants to say some things to us. He wants us to have, uh, understand that these cycles come so that we can advance progressively, that we not be dismissive or forgetful or even dominating. And by that, when you look at the Hebrew calendar, when you look at getting in alignment with the way that the calendar moves, it's not, you don't throw away last month, you add on to it. You don't throw away last year, you add on to it. You add progressive revelation. You don't dismiss it. What you do, if there were sinful things that were contrary to God, you get those under the blood and you take the lesson learned, the life principle learned and move forward. So uh, I, I wrote next uh, about the timed sequence of fullness that it overlaps and it connects wisdom. Like I said, I studied time to advance in 2015. Um, but there was back in 2005, I'm going to just show this um, on this piece of paper. Back in 2005, I had, uh, I'll try and, I'll put the Excel up there. I have it in a, a Word document. In 2005, I was studying the 12 tribes of Israel. I was breaking down who their mother was. They were born to Leah, or whether they were born to Rachel or whether they were born to Leah and whether they were born by a handmaiden. I wrote down what their names were, what was pronounced at their birth, what was pronounced at the death of Israel. I just was really studying this out back in 2005. So when I came across this revelation and I didn't even put it together with this, I started studying this in 2015, but it wasn't until 2019 when I was studying it a little more, God said, go back and get the 12 stones project from 2005 and add it to this. It's progressive revelation. And now it made it make even more sense because before I was ever on Cassandra Scott Ministries, I had already been studying out the 12 tribes. And I know many of us were in the things of God. Maybe you've already studied some of this. Maybe you've heard it. I'm not saying to throw out what we receive from the church. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that we align it with the word of God. I studied this out for myself and looked at it and extracted this stuff out of scripture to look at and get a better understanding. Let's go back in. I'm full. God, you get the glory. Prayerfully, we are seeing what you're saying. And so wisdom overlaps and connects. So don't waste anything. That's how we access and walk in the supernatural acceleration. As God, be, he may show you one piece this month and the next month, oh, that's what that piece means. This is when we get to restore the years that the canker worm has stolen. This is when they're restored as we're walking in the cycles of God, in the timing of God, recognizing what's going on and adding on and getting a cumulative wisdom for such a time as this, that accelerated restoration of wasted time you get that back once you grasp and walk in the understanding of the alignment of time. And what we're going to do next, we're going to look at a definition of cycle, that it is a process. <laughs> it will help us not to just exist. Many people said there has to be more to life than just existing. There has to be more than just going to work, going home, eating, sleeping, going to work, going home, eating, sleeping, go to church, log on to things sometimes. It, time out. Let's move away from just existing. Let's live and live life with an abundant fullness as in John chapter 10, verse 10. This was when the Lord was, these are my handwritten notes that I typed on this page and Holy Spirit said, go over these things, Paulette. So that we're going to understand the months prophetically through the time to advance and understand that with each tribe, there is a redemptive side to each tribe 
as well as a destructive side to each tribe. So there's a redemptive side and a destructive side to each tribe. And we want to understand the redemptive side and walk in as the Israel Houghton song, I'm, I've been redeemed, walk in the redeemed side of the tribes and make sure that we use the sword of the spirit and the blood of Jesus to cauterize, cut off and nullify any of the destructive side stuff that we were walking in. And so um, know this, the destructive side, the latter part manifests whenever they fell into idolatry. And so we want to make sure that we don't fall into idolatry, that we don't fall into sin, because if and when we do that is when we tap into the destructive side of those tribes. And there was a destructive side. Reuben did some out, woo, some stuff. As a matter of fact, in the birth order of the 12 tribes of Israel, because of the way that Reuben and, Sim Reuben and Simeon clowned so hard, Joseph's two sons replaced them in the birth order. That's how we get Manasseh and then Ephraim included in the, tri in the 12 tribes of Israel when it should have been Reuben and Simeon because their destructive side was so destructive Jesus. So we need to, you know, be educated about those things and about those sides as we go study it for ourselves. And so um, what we're going to look at is what I went through and queried each month. And we're going to ask Holy Spirit to interpret for us and show us how to receive this as we expose and rule out every screw tape element that he would try and bring to us. So let's look at the definition of the word cycle. Definition of the word cycle. And so I pulled this straight off the dictionary. I highlighted where I wanted us to jump to, that a cycle is one complete performance of a vibration, that's harmonizing with the heavenlies. Uh huh. One complete performance of a vibration, an electric oscillation, current alternation, or other periodic process. That's what a cycle is. It's a permutation of a set of ordered elements in which each element takes the place of the next and the last becomes the first. So you see, it, it should be adding on. You don't throw it away, you add on. That's the cycle. It's a circle or a spiral arrangement, such as an imaginary circle or orbit in the heavens. It's a long period of time, it's an age. And this one right here, when it says that a cycle is a series of narratives dealing typically with the exploits of a legendary hero. Does that not sound like Daniel 1132? Know your God so you can complete some cycles and be a legendary hero, be in the 2911. You know, 29 is the 29th book of Acts. Holy Spirit is writing through our lives and 11 is the 11th book of Hebrews, the hall of faith. Let your story be in there as you know your God and do great exploits, as you learn about how the times have been shifted. So that's defining cycle. Let's define what a process is. Again, I pulled this right off of the, the website. Um, dictionary, Miriam Webster, um, a process is to progress. It is to advance. It's a natural phenomenon marked by gradual changes that lead toward a particular result. And so this is why we get and understand the time to advance, the cycles of God. And, and so that God can move us on. I like this one. It's the whole course of proceedings in, the, in a legal action. Courtrooms of heaven manifest right there that we can understand due process and the process of God. Ooh, Jesus. It's the summons. It's a man. Mandate. It's a writ used by a court to compel the appearance of the defendant in a legal action or compliance with its orders. I'm not going to go into that one, but ooh, -wee, that's the courtrooms of heaven. I'm going to study that one out further. That's why I said I'm not going to have a pretty package period at the end of this teaching. I won't. I won't. We're going to have some question marks at the end of this teaching. And so the question is, Does is the calendar a lunar cycle or a solar cycle? And I was saying, what is why and what are you talking about? <laughs> I found this, this article. Let's just read through. Well, that's the article about new moons. But um, is it lunar or is it solar? Let me come out of share for one moment and explain this just a little bit. I will put in the information of this YouTube a link. Now, this link is 
what I like about it, it reminds me of a thesis statement because he's giving arguments for all different sides. Is it is it lunar? Is it solar? Um, who's right? Who's wrong? And he just puts down all of these things and you make the choice. You study it out for yourself. So I like that video. A lot of lots of scripture on there. Um, I'm going to put that in here so we can go back and see this even the more. But it was saying, is it a lunar calendar or a solar calendar? This is one of those screw tape elements where the enemy gets people fighting over whose calendar is right. I'm not doing that. The point of the matter is we're going to see by scripture that there are particular things that happen that we need to be in alignment with. But when we say um, September, September to us is the ninth month on the Gregorian calendar. But on the Hebraic calendar, or let's just say in the Bible, I don't even want to call it Hebraic. When I say Hebraic, I'm not talking about Black Hebrews. I'm not talking about uh, Kabbalah. That's another thing. When I began to study this out, a lot of people were saying that, th that that's getting into Kabbalah. I'm not studying Kabbalah. Listen to me, I'm not. The, the enemy will take, as Apostle Ida, let's bring Apostle Ida to the class with us right now. She's transitioned to glory. But one of the things that she taught us is that the enemy will not come at you with a, like a red, a big, scary devil. He's going to come with so much truth. He has a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of truth that he's going to come with, but then he's going to twist it just a little bit. I have these levelers here when you're doing a, a picture hanging a picture up, you put this leveler, can't, you can't see the black on it, but the point is it has a bubble that should be in the middle. And so when it's level, your bubble is in the middle and everything is straight, it's cool. The enemy wants us to get off just a little bit so we never get in the middle, we never get in alignment with God. That's what he's trying to do. And that's what he's doing with this lunar solar, getting people arguing. Now there was a Julian calendar that was shifted to the Gregorian calendar. I'm not, that's not my assignment. You'll see it on the video. They have dates. I have, I've studied this out. I have notes on it, but the Lord said, Paulette, that is not your assignment. Just put it out there. Lunar means by the moon and solar means by the sun. The, the sun is the greater light. We'll see that scripture in just a moment. And so God operates probably more so by the solar calendar, by the greater light than by the moon. Most of the stuff that operates by the moon is witchcraft and demonic. Hmm. But the people of God, the Israel, they, they in the Bible, it's in the Bible, new moon festivals. Those were man-made traditions. That's what this article was about. It says, and it said, it gave a warning. It's a man-made tradition, but and God allowed it because it's in the Canaan of scripture. But he says, as with any religious ritual, there was a danger of observing the new moon festivals without a true heart to follow God. Later in their history, the Israelites continued to observe the new moon festivals outwardly, even after their hearts had turned cold toward God. You see the problem here. They readily parted with their bulls and their lambs and they didn't mind paying to act crazy. Mm -hmm. But they were they would not give up their sins. They relied on the outward observations to cleanse them, even though there was still evil in their hearts. And God had severe words for such hypocrisy. And you see this in Isaiah one when he told them, your new moon Sabbath and Sabbath, that stuff get on my nerves. It makes me weary. That's what he says. <laughs> Sin is hateful to God and no amount of ritual or ceremony or sacrament can make up for a sinful heart. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being. Now, the reason that I was bringing up new moons and getting us to see this is that the calendar that we will look at is set up using new moons to, to get the day for us to understand where months, that the word month, what the month means. And look at this, some of the Latin meanings of those words. Um, before they came over, these were other gods. They were the, the, the Babylonian named the months and named the days of the week, but God is going to allow it. He's going to allow us to receive some things. And so the Rosh Kadesh, which is actually the head of the month. So we celebrate Rosh Kadesh, not new moon. New moon is getting over into the lunar side. It's getting into astrological stuff, but we don't throw away the stars. They're a part of the program as well. God created them, right? Um, back up at this lunar, I skipped over a scripture that I wanted us to see about the fact that God created them. Where'd you put that, Paulette? Um, hold on one second. Let me query and find it. It's in Genesis. Uh, right here. 
Oh, it's at the bottom of this page. Lunar solar. Genesis chapter one. Who created? This was on the fourth day of creation. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be signs and tokens of God's provident care and to mark seasons, days, and years. So the adversary, the enemy understands trafficking. And so he's trying to get us to move away from the tokens, the signs of God showing what's going on. And so the, the, the great light, it talked about the greater of the these two great lights. The greater one is the sun to rule by the day and the lesser is the moon to rule by the night. And he also made stars. So God's not throwing it out. He's the creator of it all. But the screw tape element is to get us, number one, so religiously where we start freaking out when you talk about stars and moons and Jesus. Psalm 104, verse 19, it says, the Lord appointed the moon for the seasons and the sun knows the exact time of its setting. And so God is the one that's in control of the sun and the moons. Nobody else is. Now, don't listen to me. The adversary, the enemy has studied the moon and the stars and has used it for a lot of mm, not so cool things. I'm gonna put it like that. Let me go to the scripture that I do not have in my notes. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, I want to pull it in the, let's go in the, I'm going to leave it in the passion. Let's see what it says. Revelation chapter 12, I'm trying to get to right here. Revelation chapter 12. Um, so rejoice you heavens. Wait, wait, wait. This is talking about the woman that's clothed with the sun. The woman clothed with the sun. And then it talks about the dragon defeated. Who is the dragon? The adversary, the enemy. Who is contending with him? Michael. So when I said that the adversary is not equal with God, he's equal with Michael. That's who's he, who he's really fighting with and contending with. And so then there's this voice in heaven that's saying, now salvation and power are set in place and the kingdom reign of our God and the ruling authority of his anointed one are established for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who relentlessly accused them day and night before God. Where did he accuse them at? In the courtrooms of heaven, day and night before God, because they were ignorant of the enemy's devices. They were not walking in dominion and the dominion that they didn't claim and walk in. The enemy is bringing that accusation, the sins, the idolatry before God day and night. And this is why we don't have time to play Christian. Okay, keep reading. Um, he's now defeated and he's cast once and for all, cast out once and for all. They conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. How many of us have quoted this scripture that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony? Come on, that you're gonna hear that piece tomorrow to testify, testify. Yeah, they triumphed because they didn't love and cling to their own lives even when faced with death. Verse 12 is where I'm trying to go. So rejoice, you heavens, and every heavenly being, but woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great fury because he knows, he knows what? He knows his time is short. And because he knows his time is short, he's trying to pervert our understanding of the times. My God in heaven. Let's praise break right here. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for everything that you're showing us on today. God, as we even go forward, looking, just scratching the surface of the time to advance, thank you for getting us in alignment with you. Thank you for speaking to our hearts and helping us fall out of agreement with any lie that we've received, God. Help us to even grasp the truth of your word and get in alignment with who you are and who we are in you, that we're in the earth realm for such a time as this. We understand there's an adversary, there's an enemy, there's a warfare that's going on, but we look to you in the midst of it all and you teach our spiritual hands to war. We glorify you in Jesus name. Amen. Now what we're going to do, we're going to look into the book, uh, Time to Advance, where I have a couple of screenshots where I took pictures out of the book. We're in a Time to Advance. This is page 112 through 114 if you have the book. So you can see the characteristics of time and position. Why are we looking at, why are we understanding that it's a time to advance and we need to understand tribes and we need to understand months? We're going to go into that a little bit more. So four characteristics of 
being de predetermined in time and positions are as follows. The first is that you know time. The second is that you know position. That has to do with your gift order or more specifically the way your gift is aligned with the body of Christ. Not only do you move in time and position, but thirdly, you get to understand movement. That's why we use the phrase, the next move of God. Hmm. How, how will we, who are positioned and ordered in time, move? We gain that from learning the way God moved the tribes. If we don't comprehend the tribes movement pattern, we can't understand the fourth characteristic, which is God's order. Order is a military term and also a mathematical term. So at the top of the call, when God said, go back to your military days, Paulette, if the military says something is at two, it's at two. So I'm praying that we can get in alignment with that because that was one of, yeah, Jesus, um, one of the things that can vex people. And so it's a mathematical term as well. These four characteristics are important because you are grafted into an overall plan of God in the earth. We are teaching these principles so that you can multiply and prosper. And so here are five keys issues involving an understanding of Rosh Kadesh, of the head of the month, of understanding the months of God, the seasons of God, the timing of God. So if you sanctify the month by celebrating at the head of the month, the whole month will be blessed. You will still go through trials and enter into warfare. See, you still have an opportunity to operate in the destructive side of the tribes. Keep going. But if you sanctify the month first, you won't lose sight of your blessings because you have confidence before God and you can hear him. Number two reason why we are doing all of this. I, I said all of that uh, before now to get to this. This is why we're doing this. This is the purpose of this call. This is the purpose of the book. This is the purpose for us as people of God. Number two, this is a day that is set aside to celebrate. You know, a lot of churches, they, they got the long face vinegar look. That's not God. It's a time for that, but really we ought to be celebrating monthly. This is a day to celebrate. Therefore, no matter what you go through, you need to remain in celebration. Now you know how to praise in season and out of season. Now you know how to give thanks unto God, no matter what's going on around you, because this is the will of God concerning you as you get to understand the cycles and the process. Number three, this is the one day to set aside to call the prophets and allow the prophetic anointing to flow. And he said, at glory of Zion, they will have people generally, he said, I will have people say this is this point is generally what keeps a lot of people from understanding Rosh Kadesh because if you have a secession root within you meaning you don't believe that there are prophets which we believe in prophets the prophetic voice you have a problem with this part but come on God help us number four this is a day to further understand God's pattern of heaven every time you participate in first fruits or Rosh Kadesh the head of the month you get your next piece of the puzzle. Uh, one of the symbols of a portion ministry is a puzzle piece. God is giving you the piece that you need to make your puzzle whole. Number five, this is a day of redemption. It's a day to enter into your redemptive plan. Your, it's your ability to buy back what has been lost is activated so you can continue in the cycle of blessing and continue to reverse loss that has entered into your bloodline. Hello. This is what produces multiplication and harvest as we deal with the bloodline issues and the best time to deal with it is at the head of the month. And so also at page 211 through 212, he's giving the insert of why we do this. We recognize recognizing which tribe we personally identify with helps us to understand our strengths and weaknesses and how to avoid the pitfalls each tribe had tendencies to fall into. And y'all know this, and those that were on CSM, I would always say, I'm an honorary member of every tribe. I can't pick just one. Because when I got in this book and it says that we will see characteristics from every tribe in us, but you'll find you, your vibe attracts your tribe. You'll find what tribe you belong to, you're connected to. So uh, Chuck Pierce and them, this was written by Chuck Pierce, uh, Robert and Linda Heidler. They go on to say, as you carefully study the 12 tribes and months in this section, Pray and ask the Lord to motivate and equip you to do the following, to shift your mindset, to think Hebraically in order to understand the fullness of how God operates, to tap into God's blessings and thrust you into a life of increase, 
multiplication and destiny. Hello, that's what I want. This is why we're doing this. Establish new patterns in your life that align with God's weekly, monthly, and yearly cycles of appointed times. And so then you will identify which tribe best links with your own family bloodline and your own calling. And then you'll move into a realm of greater revelation and application of his word. It'll create a new level of wholeness in you so that when he speaks to you, faith will arise and you will see through his eyes. It will activate the redemptive prophetic call that is in your bloodline. And you will receive his strategies to become rightly aligned and walk in his time for advancement. So ignite the blessings of Rosh Kadesh in your life as you continually, and these were the four points that we just went over, sanctify each month by setting aside a day to celebrate the head of the month. Call the prophets and allow the prophetic anointing to flow. Apply the concepts of first fruits in every aspect of your life, thereby remaining under the portal of blessing and enter into your redemptive plan through the cycle of blessing that will reverse any loss that has entered into your bloodline. And so continue to war for your covenantal rights, secure the boundaries of your destiny and carry the ark of his covenant inside you to break through and triumph over the enemy. Come to the threshing floor and allow the Lord to sift your heart and let the wind of his spirit blow on you to sanctify, purify, and bring you into his presence with praise and celebration. Recognize the angelic highway that is forming between heaven and earth so the angelic hosts begin to work on your behalf. You know that it's his word that they watch over to perform. And so now with this last few moments, I'm going to take about another 12 to 15 minutes and we will look at each month. So the first month is the month titled Nisan or Nisan, I butcher it. And the tribe associated with it is Judah. This month, it's the first month on, the, on God's calendar in God's timing. It occurs during March and April. See, we're so sometimes it kind of falls toward the end of March, the beginning of April, catches a chunk of March, April. And that's the head of the year. The head of the year is in March, April on God's calendar. Now, do you see how the enemy would try and get us to not understand? So we're celebrating the head of the year, December, January, and it's really March, April. So the fullness of the blessings that we're supposed to get, we're not able to receive because we're not really tapping into it. And so let's look here at the, the quick reference here I, I put together and i have this in a document it's in an excel document a microsoft excel document of all 12 months in a quick reference i pulled this together from definitely from the book but from some other things that i studied out so the month associated is judah it's a time for thanking god for deliverance the star or the constellation that's attached. Now remember, God created the stars. Astrology, the, the enemy coming and having us understand you a lovely lady Leo and all that other stuff, that's a counterfeit of the real thing. So you don't throw it out. The screw tape element is get people so religiously scared of it that they don't pay attention to the stars at all. The devil is a lie. We need to understand what's going on in the stars because they're a sign, right? They're God's providence that we just read that. And so Aries, this is a season of Aries, the ram, AKA the lamb. This is when we come to connect the heaven to the earth during the March, April timeframe at the head of the year. The Hebrew alphabet is hey, which pictures wind, breath, and praise. That's why we send up Judah first. Hey, Yahweh, that's hey, that's the word right there. And then characteristics of this month, it's about repentance, it's about redemption, it's about the beginning of miracles, the color for the month. If you're a dreamer, if you're a person that has visions and dreams, you wanna understand these months because sometimes God is revealing to you prophetic time code if you understand the, time, the colors, if you understand the stones, if you understand the characteristics, even if you understand the alphabet. It's progressive though, you have to keep studying it, keep it ever before you as you're spending time with God and in the word of God, you'll begin to see these things. 
So the color is dark red and sky blue because the stone is garnet, which is dark red, and blue topaz, which is sky blue. There's a sense that's attached to each month. And for this month, the sense is speech. And the organ, the body organ is right foot. I don't have time to go into all of that. I need to do another teaching where I come back and go through all of this other stuff that I looked at. One other thing, I didn't want to take their, I went and queried for myself. Let me show you what this query looks like. This is the query for myself where I went on Bible Gateway and I put in a ABIB. It's the month of uh, Nissan ABIB. Nissan didn't come up, but ABIB did. So you can go read for yourself and see what was going on during this month. I also went further and I queried everywhere where it said first month. So the first month, the first month, this is how God is looking at things, the first month. So all the way here, this is just me going through and seeing all of the biblical references of the first month and going back. I'm going to be studying this out each month. I will. This is my my blueprint for study that, you know, at the head of each month, I will go back and study this out and and. Yeah, because I want a better understanding of where we are in alignment. And when we get to the month today, I'll show you a highlight. We'll drill a little deeper. So then the second month is the month of IR. And IR is the second month. It's uh, April, May. And the tribe associated is Issachar. And the name Issachar means to understand secrets. See, they understand the times. The constellation is the Taurus. It's the bull where you observe, observing to find a place of strength. We, we learn, we grasp our strength from God during the April, May timeframe. The letter is Vav, which means connection or linking. I'm not going to go into the letters on this teaching. We'll do that on another one sometime in the future. The characteristics of this month is it is a time of natural healing to manifest. The color is royal blue. The stone is a lapis. And then the sense is thought. Come on, it's a time to pay attention to your thoughts. Go deeper into that. Not right now. The organ is the right kidney. It's a time for us to understand joy. It's a time for us to renew our mind. And again, this is the second month. I went in and I put in second month. And I got all of these references for the second month to go and look at it and put it in context, see what was taking place in the Bible during the second month. Um, and another thing, uh, let me throw this in there. Um, when I was querying these first month, second month, all the way to 12th month, um, all of the references come up in the Old Testament few times in the New Testament. And I'm not saying they don't, but few times does the New Testament refer to the, the months like this. God, that, that was just something God showed me. The third month is the month of Savan. And Savan takes place during May, June. The tribe connected is Zebulon. And Zebulon is the businessman. He's, it's, this is the businessman's month. The constellation is the Gemini. It's two tablets. It's the time that the Torah was given at Sinai. You see how the enemy comes and perverts things and takes us away from what it really meant, what was really happening during this time to get us out of alignment with time? Um, the alphabet is Zion. It's a time of receiving mercy for completion. One of the scriptures we read earlier says, come back to him and he'll give you mercy in abundance. The characteristics is it's a time of giving. It's a time of receiving boundaries. Hello. It's a time to be merciful. It's a time to get in alignment. Check your covenants. Who are you in alignment with? It's a time for you to connect your walk with your talk. It's time for you to be about what you're saying. It's a time for progress. It's a time the color is white or clear because the stone is a clear quartz or a white moonstone. The sense is walking. Hello, connect your walk with your talk. It's time for us to acknowledge sincerity and movement. Again, I queried third month. And again, here's all of the instances in the Bible where it's mentioned and in the third month and in the third month of Savan. And so just going deeper on my own, I'm going to go back and study those out for myself. And so the next month is Tammuz. This is the month where we are right now. This is the time between June and July. So we'll spend just a few moments going a little, looking a little bit more at this. And each month I will pull this document back up and drill into those scriptures and see what God is saying to me direct. I've been receiving this revelation from Glory of Zion, Robert Heidler and Chuck Pierce all these years. And now God is saying, Paulette, you have enough of it in you. It's time for you to become a teacher of this. <clears throat> so this fourth month, Tammuz, 
the tribe is Reuben. And as I said, Reuben, Reuben. Now Reuben messed up by sleeping with his daddy's woman in public in front of everybody. Yeah, that's what he did. This in the Bible. <laughs> he messed up. But the one thing that he did do when they were trying to sell, uh, kill Joseph, he spoke up for Joseph. So he, he has a redemptive side, but he had the destructive side. Hello. And so the constellation is the cancer. And I love Chuck Pierce said, don't look at cancer like we're talking about sickness. Cancer is actually the crab. And so it's a time to remove the shell from your body that we become vulnerable before God in this time and in this season. The letter is Chet, which means light radiating from your eyes. It's time for illumination to come forth. This is the film strip month where everything, the progress from the other three months and the other years behind will begin to come before you in film strips. This is a month of dreams coming forth. This is a month to guard your heart and your eyes. Watch what you're looking at in this film strip month because you'll mess around and rewrite something wrong. It's a time for proper worship to come forth. Be mindful not to create golden calves during this time, because that's when the children of Israel did create golden calves. The color is red. The stone is a carnelian. The sense is a sight. The organ is the right hand. It's a time of might. It's a time of awe. Let's read what I wrote up here. It's a month. It's to see and establish the brilliance of your righteousness. So. Tem Temu starts, I have the date, I don't want to move from where I am. Uh, Gloria Zion will be observing Temu's tomorrow. So it's this is the time for us to understand. And even for those that uh, were at Turning Point Faith Ministries, the intercessors, we read a letter each month where we were showing you these nuggets of what was going on during the month so we can know how to intercede, know the timing of God. Mm -hmm. And so it's a month to be brilliant through worship or develop a golden calf. So be mindful. It's a month to accept your call to, or you're either going to accept your call or you're going to speak an evil report. And if you speak an evil report, you mess up the cycle for the year. So be careful in this month of what you're saying out of your mouth. That's why God has been telling us on double portion, watch what you're saying. Don't be worrying. Don't be speaking crazy stuff out of your mouth because the angels are watching the, the angels of light and the angels of dark. Hello. So film strip month, watching your progress and then make adjustments. And then it's a month to guard your heart and your eyes as in Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. It's the right hand. It's of aligning the aligning of covenant as in the song of Solomon five, verse two through 12. That's where he talks about, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. And so looking at the scriptures, um, this is a time, look, I, I put these yellow highlights in here because this is the month I was studying out Tamus. So I'm sharing with you guys something that I will be working on over the next year, but even over the rest of my life alive in the land of the living of studying out each month. So we're in the fourth month. There was some, it was famine during this month. And there was the, the enemy came and broke into the city in this month. And then this month, famine was so severe in the book of Jeremiah, in the book of Ezekiel, in the fourth month, it says, now when I was in my 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was in the midst of captivity, so here he is in captivity, <laughs> but look what happened. The heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. It's the film strip month. Now you begin to see the visions. I didn't just take, when they said that it was a film strip month, I was like, what are they talking about? But when I studied it for myself and it says right here that his film strip opened in scripture, hello, Zechariah. It, in the fourth month, it's an appointed time just for us to understand that Judah goes first. It's a time of joy, of gladness, of cheerfulness, of appointed seasons. And so this is something for us to understand in the fourth month. Run through. I'm just going to run through the rest of the months really fast, not bogged down so we can be done looking at the time. Jesus, here we are at the fifth month. It's between June and July. It's the month of Av. It's the tribe of Simeon. And Simeon means to hear or to be concerned. And it is the Leo month. It is the, the lion. The lion shall roar. The Amos 3.8 month. It's time for the divine will of the father to be executed. And then the letter is Tet, which resembles a womb. This is the pregnant month. 
That's what this month is. It's a pregnant month. It's a time to metamorphose or to disintegrate. Either you're going to be the pregnant and the pregnancy is going to come to pass or disintegrate up. Oh, there'll be spiritual abortions. Hello. It's time to develop discernment during this month. And the color is green. <clears throat> the stone is emerald. The sense is hearing. The organ is the left kidney. It's a time of kingdom lowliness. It's a time for us to demote ourselves in the sight of the kingdom. And so here in this fifth month, I will be studying this out because that is my birth month. And there are some things when I started studying this, I'm like, oh my goodness. So maybe if you don't know your tribe and you're trying to find your tribe, this tribe of Simeon may be you. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Keep going to the sixth month. So all of that was the fifth month. <clears throat> sixth month is the tribe of Gad. It's the end of August over to September. Um, the Hebrew name of this month is Elo. Um, the constellation is Virgo or the Virgin. Mm -hmm. there, there is, again, that's the I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. The alphabet is the Yud. It's about appointed mercy from the hand of God. The characteristics of this month, it's a time to fix what is broken. Hello. It's a time to run into the power of his might, Jesus. It's a mothering, a mother nurturing month. We know him as daddy God. We know him as the father provider, but he also has mothering characteristics. It's a time for our faith to be activated and because it requires action. The color is gray. The stone is Jasper, uh, a hematite. The sense is action, walk it out. It's the left hand, it's talking about beauty and mercy. And so you have the month of Elo mentioned specifically there and the sixth month, there are all these references to the sixth month. Let's get to the seventh month, Ephraim. Seventh month is Ephraim. It happens between September, the end of September, beginning of October. The name Ephraim, the, the seventh month is the month of Tishrai or Tishrei. Tishrei, probably Tishrei because high is H-E-I and okay, Tishrei, okay. Ephraim and Mihimi, that tribe means to be fruitful and multiply. The constellation is the Libra. It's the scales of justice. Hello. It's where deeds are weighed and judgment is released. And I just heard Holy Spirit say the combination of Ephraim and Dan, because Dan means judged as well. And that's why Ephraim, Dan, and Ephraim is connected mm -hmm. with Dan. Keep going. The alphabet is Lamed. It's an aspiration to return to your absolute source, to, Tish, to Jehovah. That word, that means Jehovah in that language. I don't speak that language. <laughs> the characteristics, remember the other month was a pregnant month. Now this is a completion month. It's a month of fullness. In Mark chapter nine, it's a month where she reached out and touched during this time. If you go, when we look at the scripture that happened during this, this month, it's a time to return to God. It's a time to experience his glory. It's a time of awakening. The color is black. Um, the stone is a black onyx, a, a gate. The sense is touch. The organ is gallbladder or private organs, Jesus, because it's a month of sexual desire, but it's a month for the foundation of truth to be established. And the thing about this September, October, or even the month before, usually there's another Jewish holiday that's celebrated right here. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So these, this was my query of looking at the seventh month. We'll study that later. Seventh month, there was a lot of references to that seventh month because the number seven, um, I had that in my notes. The number seven, the reason there were so many references is because the dearest of months, because all sevens are dear, which creates the most satiated or full month. That's why it's a month of birthing. Month eight, Sheshvan, October, November, Sheshvan, the tribe is Manasseh. It means to forget, to leap up and away. The constellation is a Scorpio um, or scorpions. Now you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions. So don't be afraid of them. Just know what you're supposed to do. And even that serpents, Dan, Dan shall be a serpent on the road. Okay, keep reading. The alphabet is none, which symbolizes the Messiah. <clears throat> Excuse me. The characteristics is that it's a time to digest what you've heard and all of the seven months before. Now digest it. 
It's a time of the number eight stands for eternal revelation and new beginning. It, this is the time that the flood began, the flood of Noah. This is also the time that the rainbow came, promised covenant. It's also a time of fragrance of myrrh. The color for this month is violet or black because, um, yeah, violet or black. Um, the stone is a black onyx or an agate. The sense is a smell and the organs are intestines. Good Lord. I looked it up several times. Here we have the eighth month. Let's get to the ninth month. The ninth month is Kislev. It happens between November and December. The tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was the most gifted of all of the, the tribes with the art and the bow. And um, <clears throat> Benjamin's constellation is Sagittarius. Let me drink some water. <clears throat> God get the glory. Sagittarius, the archer, it's a time to fight against empires and cultures. And isn't it something <clears throat> for those of us that understood or looked at, I had to repent of, of Zodiac, of studying Zodiac back when I was younger because everybody did it. And that's what I thought I was supposed to do. I had to repent of that. But one of the things with from understanding the Zodiac, the symbol for the Sagittarius is this thing that's half man, half animal. Well, it's the time to fight against empires and cultures that culturally they were studying the Zodiac and all that other stuff. Come on. It's the time I'm adding this in. I didn't find it in my studies, but this is the time for the Psalm 18, the warrior Psalm. This, the, the alphabet is Semek. It's a time to trust. It's a time of support. It's a time of coming full circle because we're almost back at the beginning of the new year. Because remember we're in the ninth month. Um, it's a time to develop warfare strategies. It's a time to enter into a new level of trust and rest in the Lord. That's the Matthew 11, 28 through 30. It's a time to ask for the rivers of life to flow. The color is multicolored. The color is a rainbow. The stone is opal or a rainbow jasper. The sense is sleep. Ooh, Jesus. You're going to develop warfare in your sleep. In the book of Job, he says, I'll come to you in your sleep and show you some things because he has to by bypass our conscience. Uh-huh, the organ is a belly or the stomach. It's a time for victory and confidence. This is the time that Nehemiah prayed for the people in the book of, in the month of Kislev in Nehemiah chapter one. We see all of these the things that happened in the ninth month, get to the 10th month, tribe of Dan. Um, the 10th month is Tevet. It happened from December to January. Dan means to judge to grow up, to mature. The constellation is the Capricorn. The alphabet is iron or the eye, the spring. This is a time where the war is a time for war. It's a time to break the power of the evil eye and of the evil watcher during the month of Tevet, during the 10th month, during the time of Dan, who is here to vindicate and bring justice. Uh-huh, it's a time to let your good eye see. The characteristics is that mercy in the midst of destruction. Jesus, that's what's going on in this month. Mercy in the midst of destruction. So see, when we're normally, this is the time of the Gregorian New Year. So we're tapping into some things we really are. But if we open up our understanding a little bit more, we open up a supernatural acceleration into the things of God. Because it's also a time of holy anger and righteous indignation. Because what happens for some people, New Year's parties that I had to repent for back in the day because I used to turn up, help Lord. Um, God would be angry. He said, but it's a time for us to be angry and sin not. God, holy anger of God, but it's a righteous indignation. Therefore, don't let anger cause you to sin. It's also a time to fast and to purify your bloodline, which purifies your brain. Come back to the thesis statement where it's talking about, we got to take better care of our brain. Jesus, the color is dark blue, turquoise. The stone is sapphire or turquoise. The sense is anger, be angry and sin not. The organ is liver. It's about wisdom or the nullification thereof. And so here are many times the 10th month, the 10th month is mentioned, 11th month, get to the 11th month, tribe of Asher. The 11th month happens between June and February and it's known as Shavat. The tribe is Asher and Asher means pleasure, happiness, fatness, but it's also a time to beware of the king's delicacies where he's trying to get people off. Mm -hmm. The constellation is Aquarius or the water carrier. And when I thought of that, I think of how the Marine Kingdom tries to jack things up with that's how the time got thrown off because now he comes in and resets right in this month. 
but it's a time that your roots are awakened to the water of life. So don't give in to counterfeit water. You got to plug into the tree of life, the water of life, Jesus. The alphabet is Sedek. It symbolizes the righteous one. Characteristics are righteousness becomes one. Righteousness becomes your foundation. Mm -hmm. It's the plan. It's a time to plan for the generations. It's a time that my blessings are on the way. Now you see how the, the Gregorian calendar will take some good things. This is, this is what's happening right now. But if we didn't take all these months ahead of time preparing, the blessings are on the way because I prepared in month one through 10. The color is light green, light olive green or yellow because the stone is a quartz, a citron quartz or the pyridote. The sense is eating. The organ is the stomach, the galette. Uh, this is a month of pleasure, of taste that happened in the 11th month. And I only found three queries of what happened in the 11th month, Jesus. Lastly, the 12th month, Adar, Naphtali. Naphtali is the one here. This is February to March, it's the 12th month, Adar. Naphtali means sweetness to me. It's a time to celebrate that your curse is overturned. Um, the constellation is Pisces or the fishes, two fishes, Jesus. Jesus, there's a lot there. It's a time for finding supply in the hidden world. It's also a time to find your identity. Um, the alphabet is cuff, meaning the removing of the masquerade. It's time to take off your mask and enter into the joy of the Lord. It's time for true identity and both spiritual and physical to manifest. Come on, look at the, the thesis statement that God gave me. Now, when we get that in us and we understand the dichotomy of identity, the dichotomy of Imago Day and mental health issues, now we learn our identity, spiritual and physical. It causes us to overturn worry. We develop war strategies even the more. We don't let fear in. We guard, we guard against idolatry. We remove roots of depression. We break through into faith. The color is purple. Look at that. The color is purple. The stone is amethyst. The sense is laughter and the organ is the spleen. So that was the 12th month. And then we start all over again, a new cycle at the month of Nisan. I know I've said a lot. We'll come back in another one of my, uh, it won't even be something I'm just gonna do it when Holy Spirit tells me to do it. Looking at when it was saying the body organ and the senses that are attached. I was like, God, I don't wanna talk about that even because the Kabbalists talk about it and, and you they start talking about chakras and all that other stuff. God said, they are the counterfeit. You have to expose the authentic, Paulette. One of my things is the authentic word. He said, expose the authentic. Don't be afraid of it because they're counterfeiting it. If you don't ever, come on, we study the original so we recognize the counterfeit when it comes. And so I need to go back and look at scripturally, what does it mean that these months symbolize the senses and the body organs? And when I began to study that thing today, oh my gosh, I saw some stuff, but time permitting, I'm going to stop right there. God, I thank you. I know I have released a lot into the hearing of your people. I give you access, God, to take this word. And as we go through the cycles and as we get in alignment with you, progressive revelation will come. Just like we celebrate our years and we mark off on the calendar our birthdays and we mark off on the calendar, the new year on the Gregorian calendar, even the new year on the Hebraic calendar. We're in 2021, 5781. We thank you, God, that we will mark off as we go through the months, the first month, the second month and we will begin to recognize what's going on and you get the glory out of our lives we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen and bless god glory to god jesus i made it through y'all who i want to open for any question and answers that we want uh, on the recording let's open and see who wants to go first come on pastor paulette this is dodie yes ma'am oh wow Oh, <laughs> you filled us up today, girl. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I thank you. I thank you. It was, oh my God. It was just, um, for, so informative, but, but I have to share that it was, um, very delightful and, and, um, 
to, to know that I have the book, because I think you shared that with us on one of our other sessions that we had. So I had ordered it. So, um, and haven't had the time to just like go, you know, read it and really go through it. But you have a spark, a plug in me today. I know what I need to do. So girl, you did it today. You did it. It was a lot of impacted information, but you did it. Thank you for sharing. And I, I'm, I have my book that I'm going to uh, dig into so much more so I can be well informed and educated about that. So thank you for that great blessing this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. Hey Amen. You are so welcome. And what I will do each month, I'm going to do my own head of the month recording. And so you guys will get that. If, if I, if Holy Spirit gives it to me to do it, when I can invite you to come on live, I'll do that. But if not, I'll just send you the playback of me going and studying out these months. The way he's shown me this document is 45 pages long right now. It's going to grow over the year because I'm going to study this thing out. We'll be the more you know, the more you don't know, the more you don't know, the more you need to know. We're forever growing. We're forever learning. Amen. Anyone else? I know it's a lot. Thank you, Keisha. I think you're probably saying it's a good thing that you got on this. Be able to follow along with all of that that was there. Um, and thank you, Juanita. You're probably at maybe at work. Um, so we're going to um, pray out and give me one second. God, I thank you for the people that were able to join me and even the people that are watching the playback via YouTube. I thank you that we understand better what it means to get in alignment with you that you show us what it is that we need to see in this time and in this season. Now we understand when we pray in this time and in this season, we begin to understand and we begin to plug in and we want to leave a legacy and a heritage and an inheritance inherit in inheritance for the next generation for our children and our children's children and so we thank you god that you continue to speak to our hearts speak to us speak through us in jesus name we pray amen and bless god see you next month